and I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. This hearing is adjourned. And we cannot like have another year with gold going up another $300 an ounce. We can't have another but would 16 months of the would you sell stocks right now? Would you sell gold mining stocks? They're getting hit today pretty hard. Would you keep selling them, my friend, or would you go and buy them on weakness? All the gold that's ever been mined since the start of time is above ground and ready to be sold at the right price. So uh, there's just no fundamental demand here. If interest rates start moving up, it makes it more expensive to carry gold, and the dollar's firming. So, yes, I would sell commodities and commodity stocks today. Okay. Well, you have to love it because even when it's just doing super well, did you see gold this week? Gold is still the subject of a tremendous amount of controversy. It's amazing how old habits and ideas die hard even in the midst of a paradigm shift. That was a debate going on CNBC this week. James Turk is sitting in the medals chair from Spain. Jim. Well, for gold investors, it was a down day on Friday. We've got gold down close to 4%. Joining us from Europe is James Turk. And, James, why don't we talk about a couple things. We had a story come out this week that China said gold was in a bubble. Are they trying to talk gold down as they buy it? Number two, we have this issue today where we got this drop in the unemployment rate, and these numbers are adjusted so often it's hard to keep track but based on today's unemployment rate the feeling on wall street is the economy is improving things are getting better you don't need gold and third i'd like to talk about next year the government's going to have to finance four trillion dollars two trillion in new deficits and two trillion of existing debt rolling over yeah you know china has indicated that it's been a buyer of gold a few years ago they announced a couple increases to the imf of their total holdings and As everybody knows, they announced a big increase in their holdings back in June. So if you're a big buyer that continues to receive a lot of dollars coming your way because of the trade imbalance with the U.S., you're going to talk the gold price down. I think it's quite simple. They're not going to chase it. I think they're going to do what they've been doing all along and just buying the dip. So I think there's a China bid under the market, and I really don't see this correction uh, lasting too long. You know, what's driving gold this time is something different. It's really the shortage of physical metal. When Greenlight announced back in July that they were switching out of GLD into physical metal, that started a stampede by other investors as well, moving from paper gold into the real thing. And this is continuing, and I think that it's likely to continue going into next year. So, you know, today was a bad down day, but it has to be put into perspective in terms of what gold has done this year. You know, we're up 30% year to date. We had a big month last month, and this month is not over. You know, I still think we're going to finish the year within that twelve to $1,400 range simply because of demand for physical metal here. You know, you brought up Einhorn. When you see, I think, Paulson's holdings are larger than several major central banks. When you see Paulson, Einhorn, and Paul Tudor Jones accumulating large amounts of gold, these guys don't strike me, James, as the kind of guys that are in there to flip for a 100 buck trade. No, exactly. Particularly, you know, Einhorn, when he moved out of GLD into physical gold, you just have to assume that he's planning to hold that for a while, which implies that he sees some tough times coming, and I do too. I don't think we're out of this financial crisis yet. I know. Just look at Dubai. Take a look at conditions in Greece. And this brings me up to a final question here, because we saw this drop in the unemployment rate on Friday, and Wall Street's already talking about you know a Fed exit strategy because the economy is on the mend. I just don't see that other than uh, today's numbers will probably be readjusted next month. Yeah, you know, we had a drop back in August that was also taken initially pretty well by the market. Then we had the huge increases in unemployment in September and October. I think we're going to stay over double-digit unemployment for quite some time. If you actually look at the numbers, one of the reasons why the number was much lower than expectations is they took a huge, I think it was 290,000 people out of the workforce saying that, you know, they've given up and aren't looking for work anymore. So, you know, again, you get a lot of crazy things happening month to month in the numbers. But the real economy, I think, is still pretty weak, that as long as the real economy continues as weak as it is, unemployment is not going to improve anytime soon. In speaking of the Fed's exit strategy, how are they going to exit when the government next year is going to have to finance or refinance $2 trillion of maturing debt in an additional $2 trillion of a budget deficit. I mean, $4 trillion is a lot of money, even for a country the size of the United States. 
Yeah, you know, it's quite clear that the U.S. government is spending far beyond its means. And what's happening is that the market doesn't want to lend that money to the U.S. government. I don't think the market has the capacity to lend to the U.S. government as much money as the U.S. government wants to spend, with the consequence that the Federal Reserve is buying government debt. You know, they call it quantitative easing. They try putting a nice-sounding name on it, but it's basically creating money out of thin air. And what that's doing is debasing the dollar. Yeah, you're going to have occasional dollar rallies like we have today, but the long-term trend for the dollar continues down, and it will continue down unless the Federal Reserve changes its policies and does what Volcker did back in 1980 in similar circumstances. You know, Volcker was raising interest rates because the market that he was going to defend the dollar, and he kept raising them and, until the market finally understood that he was serious. And you know, here's Bernanke keeping interest rates at a low, thinking he can save the economy without damaging the dollar. But it's a very risky strategy that he's pursuing with these chalkboard theories that have been untested in the real world. You know, Bernanke is a, an academic, not a business person, and he's taking some awful risks with the U.S. economy. But, you know, the politicians in Washington are to blame, too, because they continue to spend money, and that's forcing the Federal Reserve's hand to buy government debt and create this currency the way they're doing it. You wonder, James, how long we're going to be able to get away with this. In other words, when governments around the globe say, look, you, you guys, uh, you're hearing more and more countries, whether it's Brazil, Russia, the IMF, the World Bank, talking about, you know, the reckless spending that's taking place in this country right now, that at some point uh, we can't finance it or there's just not going to be enough money coming into our bond markets where the only other option is to simply uh, just monetize it, and that happens, uh, the dollar's toast. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let's just think back here recently. You know, the Fed initially said they were going to stop their quantitative easing in October, and then when October came along, they said, well, they're going to continue it until March. You know, there's no doubt in my mind when March comes along, given the, the amount of financing that the U.S. government has to do next year, the Fed's going to say that we're going to continue quantitative easing for another six months. It's just the same kind of lack of discipline that the federal government has with the national debt limit, which is you know bumping again here where they're going to have to increase the debt limit. So yeah, it's you know the outlook for currencies, the economy remain bad. The outlook for gold remains good. I think we're going to see much higher prices next year. And so, given this fallback that we've seen pullback on uh, Friday, I, I imagine, James, your advice would be the same as it always is. As long as gold remains cheap, continue to average in and on yep. buying the dips. Yep, that's it. You know, ignore the day-to-day, the week-to-week stuff. Just have your plan where your dollar cost averaging, you know, every month, month in, month out, or every quarter, you know, whatever makes sense to you. You know, some days you might be buying a little bit higher. Some days you might be buying a little bit lower. But, you know, a year from now, you're going to look back, just like people who bought a year ago or three years ago or five years ago are looking back and saying, yeah, wow, that saving sound money makes sense. And that's the way you should continue to view it, gold and silver sound money. Savings are always a good thing. It's even a better thing when you're saving gold. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. In full cooperation with the International Monetary Fund and those who trade with us, we will press for the necessary reforms to set up an urgently needed new international monetary system. Stability and equal treatment is in everybody's best interest. I am determined that the American dollar must never again be a hostage in the hands of international speculators. I'm taking one further step to protect the dollar, to improve our balance of payments, and to increase jobs for Americans. As a temporary measure, I am today imposing an additional tax of 10% on goods imported into the United States. This is a better solution for international trade than direct controls on the amount of imports. This import tax is a temporary action. It isn't directed against any other country. It's an action to make certain that American products will not be at a disadvantage 
because of unfair exchange rates. When the unfair treatment is ended, the import tax will end as well. Are U.S. Treasury bonds still safe to invest in? Very much so. I think there's a... This is not an issue of credit rating. The United States can pay any debt it has because we can always print money to do that. So there is zero probability of default.